Since the dawn of time, the collective unconscious has clung to a concept, a single idea. What if everyone's favorite Persona characters were put in a crossover lifted straight from a fanfic writer's fever dream? And it also played like an Etrian Odyssey game. Because sure, why not? And in 2014, this wish was granted, in the form of Persona Q, Shadow of the Labyrinth. And it was pretty okay. The appeal of Persona on a Nintendo console was alluring to many, but the characters people fell in love with felt a bit like caricatures of themselves. The dungeon crawling was fun, but the story had nothing special. In short, Q had potential, but it couldn't live up to its premise. A piece of the puzzle was missing. And that was the release of Persona 5. Coming out almost half a decade after the original, Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth is everything I wanted PQ to be, and more. It's a celebration of modern Persona games. It combines the premise of Q with the cast and stunning aesthetic of Persona 5 to make, in my opinion, the best Persona spin-off ever made. And I feel like I have the clout to say that because, you know, I've only played every game in this entire series. Everything has been improved across the board, from writing to gameplay. It doesn't feel like just another filler game to tide us over until P6 comes out. It feels like a full-fledged mainline title and is a perfect send-off to the 3DS. Unfortunately, the game sold very poorly in Japan thanks to it being released far too late in the system's life cycle. This video was originally going to be your standard Cullen review, but it didn't take me long to fall madly in love with this game. So to try to save it from that fate in the West, I figured I should shift gears and tell you all why you should care about Persona Q2 in this spoiler-free introduction video. The premise is simple. The Phantom Thieves investigation team sees and one-tenth of another sees are all minding their own business when they suddenly get yeeted out of their respective timelines and wake up in films connected to a magical theater. They're locked inside this theater, with four mysterious locks preventing them from escaping. Unlike the previous game, which had two different stories centered around the P3 and P4 casts, Q2 has one, with the Phantom Thieves starting out as the main party. You might think that means less content, but the reality is that instead of two messy plot lines, we get a single focused one. Q2's story is entirely standalone, so you don't need to have played the original to jump right into this. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as your first Persona game either, since it expects you to already know these characters. Joker returns as the game's main protagonist and is responsible for rallying the Persona users to escape back to their respective worlds. Don't worry though, just because he's the protagonist doesn't mean the Phantom Thieves steal the show. All three casts get their time to shine. The previous protagonists now feel like fleshed out characters far more than they did in the previous game. Honestly though, I'm most impressed with how the team handled the return of the Persona 3 portable female protagonist. Fans have wanted to see her come back for quite some time, and I'm happy the writers made her work so well. She's the first new Persona users the Phantom Thieves meet, and her adorable interactions with them was one of the highlights of the game for me. You'd never be able to tell she used to be a silent protagonist. She's wonderfully chipper and even serves as a great contrast to the original P3 protag once he shows up. While Persona 5 doesn't hog the limelight in terms of plot relevance, there are a couple elements of this game where it does and rightfully so. The gameplay and visuals are completely overhauled to fit the aesthetic established in P5, which is a good thing because that's basically the most gorgeous game ever made. From the second you hit that difficulty select screen, you know you're in for a treat. Q2 doesn't just copy P5's aesthetic verbatim though. It takes the spirit of P5's UI and translate that to the cinema vibe the game has going for it. The battles all start with this cool film reel transition, and the battle menus have been streamlined to mirror P5's combat system. The theater, which serves as the game's hub, showcases this the best, I think. It's a stunning area to look at, with so much life thanks to how creative these menus are. It's a bit of a shame this game is trapped on the 3DS's low-resolution screen, since it's downright beautiful. You might find my long rant on user interface unnecessary, but I think it's warranted since, you know, Q2 is the best looking game released on the 3DS. So you can take that comment you're typing out right now and shush, my sweet child. Now, as for gameplay, I think it does a good job at giving the first person dungeon crawling mechanics a nice persona twist. 
If you've ever played an Etrian Odyssey game, the main gameplay loop is directly inspired from that. It's a bit streamlined to suit Persona, but I think the two styles work well together. You explore expansive labyrinths in a first-person perspective, battle enemies, feel the joy and satisfaction of unlocking shortcuts on the map, gather materials to craft items and equipment, and return to the base to start the cycle anew. The part that makes the system so unique is that you're responsible for drawing your own maps on the bottom screen. If this sounds overwhelming and tedious, then don't worry. There's a toggle in the options menu that turns on auto maps so the walls draw themselves for every square you travel. Since you still have to draw your own landmarks, I personally found this the best way to play. It doesn't sacrifice the Etrian influence, it just lets you go at your own pace. All the labyrinths have a lot of variety to them too. There are five in total and none of them ever seem to drag like the ones in PQ. They're all based on movie genres with the first three relating to the themes of Persona 5, Persona 4, and Persona 3 respectively. I especially love the film grain filter added to the screen every time you enter one of the dungeons. It's subtle, yet effective. The dungeons themselves all have exclusive mechanics that differentiate them, and Q2 actually has unique map icons for all of them. Mm, shout out to my boy Inari for making the map making in Persona Q, you know, function. The dungeon crawling was addictive, and I found this game next to impossible to put down. I already happened to enjoy the Etrian Odyssey series quite a bit, so obviously this is like heaven for me. But I think there's enough to enjoy here for Persona fans, even if they think they wouldn't dig the first person dungeon crawling aspects. The combat is one of the biggest reasons for this. I'll break it down a bit in case you've never played Q though. You form a party of 5 characters out of a total of 25 party members to choose from. This seems like a lot, because, well it is, but in a good way. Anyway, there are two rows. Characters in the front do more physical damage but are more susceptible to attacks, and the opposite for the back row. Because of this you want your physical attackers in the front, and magic users in the back. There are also two navi slots, letting you pick your favorite two navigators to help you on either the field or in battle. And ooh, sorry Fuka, you didn't make the cut. That's the way! You found the enemy's weakness! Yes! The enemy's down! I appreciate how much freedom you're given to form a party, and experimenting with your formation is a lot of fun. I do wish reserve characters could earn some EXP, but there are workarounds for that. Before I get into actual combat, I should bring up that the sub-persona system also returns. Unlike 3, 4, and 5, the main characters don't have the wild card. Everyone does. Sorta. Every party member can equip another persona in addition to their main one, with it giving them another set of skills and perks. This is also where fusion comes into play, letting you fuse other sub-personas into new ones. This system is pretty dense in itself, so for the sake of brevity, let's just say it works wonderfully and move on. Once you get into a fight, you'll quickly pick up the flow of how it all works. Aiming for elemental weaknesses is still the name of the game, but this game doesn't have a one more system. Instead, when a character hits an enemy weakness, it stuns that enemy, putting the character in boost mode. This lets them attack first on the next turn, buffing their skills, and making them cost nothing. To keep this system from being broken, if they get hit during the same turn they obtain a boost, they lose it. One improvement on the boost system comes from a change adapted from Persona 5. Baton Passing. Baton Pass joins the list of support skills, allowing you to use some of your party gauge to take one character's boost and transfer it to another. This could be pretty useful in a pinch if you need another character to administer some free healing or any other skill boosted characters don't have. It's especially useful for SP conservation. Once every enemy is knocked down, your entire party can perform an all-out attack. They look awesome in PQ2. But what looks even better is the new all-out attack finishers. Directly inspired from P5, if the all-out attack is a killing blow, the entire party does a sweet action pose as the dust settles. Both of these are quick and to the point, and finishers are encouraged because it boosts your experience gained. Another great addition to Cube 2 are unison skills, which are unlocked in the story or in side quests. Unison skills are flashy sequences where two or more characters that have a close bond join together to attack and do a ton of damage. All it takes for these to activate is at least one character who has this particular skill to be in the party. You'll also be happy to know that all the elements introduced in P5 return in PQ2. There are also now HP skills that can dish out elemental damage, making your physical attacks more useful in hitting weaknesses. You can even use status effects on bosses, making them useful for once. 
I know I've gone on for quite a bit, but there are just so many moving parts that make this battle system work so unbelievably well. The game can be a bit hard, especially when it comes to bosses, but as a whole, everything clicked for me immediately. I think one of the reasons it works so well is due to all the battles having some legendary music accompanying them. Did you enjoy that awkward baton pass and a talking about the soundtrack? Thanks! Me neither! Atsushi Kitajo is the main composer for this game, and I cannot stress enough how perfect the soundtrack is. This is one of, if not the best, soundtrack in a Persona game. It masterfully highlights the unique styles of all three games, while still having an identity of its own. This is best exemplified in the game's battle theme. Oh, did I say battle theme? I meant battle themes, as in four of them. That's right, there are four battle themes in this game. Even P3P gets one. By default, it's set to shuffle the unlocked ones, which goes a long way in keeping the battles from becoming stale. All four of them perfectly encapsulate the vibe of all the battle themes they're based on, while still being completely original. The bar for Persona music is set so astronomically high, and yet PQ2 was able to hop over it, set it higher, and go, yeah, here's 94 tracks of pure dopamine. Enjoy yourself, BB. I-L-Y. Kitajo did an outstanding job, and I would have no issues if he was kept on as the series' main composer. One of the other highlights of the game's soundtrack is the hub theme, titled Cinematic Tale. When you first encounter it, you naturally think, okay, wow, just another great Lin song. Thank you, Queen, for my life. But it actually evolves as time goes on. Every time a new Persona cast joins, the main vocalist of that game joins the song, until all three of them are singing in harmony. Listen, I don't like exaggerating, and I know I'm getting a bit too excited for this, but my god, this OST is something special. Okay, okay. I'll stop gushing about the music and focus on the story. And gush about that too. I won't get into the actual plot itself, but man, the character interactions. I didn't have high expectations after Persona Q, but the new writing team really kicked ass here. Some of the characters still feel a bit simpler than how they appeared in their own game, sure, but they're way better than how they were handled in previous spin-offs. Their interactions with each other are pretty engaging, and you'd have to have a heart deader than the Great Seal to not feel anything from the dialogue. I know some might be put off by the lack of a dub, but thanks to the writing quality and excellent localization, it was easy to adjust. Believe me, this isn't something worth passing on just because there isn't a dub. A game released this late into the system's life cycle isn't expected to make a bunch of money, so a dub was never really on the table. I'm just happy we got it at all. And the Japanese cast is amazing anyways, so there's really not an issue. Anyway, instead of social links to handle all the character growth outside of the main story, Q2 does special screenings. These are side quests centered around specific casts of characters that remix part of the labyrinths with new objectives. They're self-contained, and can be accessed in the hub like with every other labyrinth. Cute dynamics form that you probably wouldn't have ever expected, like Chie and On, Makoto and Mitsuru, Akechi, Ken and Koromaru, and even the protagonists of 4 and 5 just broing it out to name a few. The reward in all of these quests are definitely worth it, and the interactions that take place are pretty fun. I actually got emotional quite a few times while playing this. And I'm happy that Atlas got a writing team to finally do the premise justice. I've been a fan of this series for nearly a decade now. I've played every single entry and these games mean a lot to me. So when I say Persona Q2 is the best Persona spinoff ever made, don't take that statement lightly. If you're a Persona fan, you owe it to yourself to check this out. Literally every single aspect of this game slaps. The gameplay, localization, story, cutscenes, music, you name it. I'm really sad the game didn't do well in Japan, and I hope that we can still see this team return in the future to make another Persona game. I really don't want to see what is probably the last 3DS game bomb again, especially when it's this good. If you're looking for a 50 to 70 hour RPG to tide you over until P5 Royal next year, Persona Q2 is exactly what you're looking for. Hey, just want to leave two quick thanks before this video ends. The first to my wonderful friend Super Butterbuns for letting me use her studio to record all the audio, and the second to Atlas USA for providing me with a review copy of this game so I could record the footage to show you all in this video. That'll be it for me, hope you all enjoyed the video, and have a wonderful day.